this is flip le mini lecture number 37C. And I'm going to cover the last of the material that I covered in lecture today. And then in flip mini lecture 38, I'll get on with the new stuff. The last of the material that we covered today was about the pendulum. So I'm going to draw a pendulum here. Okay, there's a pendulum swinging. There's vertical. There's theta. Measuring the angle that the pendulum has has gone. And here's a mass that's hanging off the pendulum. And then we need to give this length here some name. So we'll kind of call that L. And there's a lot of ways to solve this problem. It's an easy problem. But you have some real powerful machinery at your hands at the moment now. Since we finished the chapter 12 on rotational motion, you can go, oh my gosh. I can apply the tau equals I alpha, that is torque equals moment of inertia times angular acceleration. I can apply that to this problem. Well, uh, the only force, force that's creating torque on this mass is mg. There is also, of course, the tension of the rope, but that's not creating any torque. This force here, though, this does have some tangential component. So mg points straight down, the part that we're interested in is that tangential component. And what's the size of that tangential component? Well, if this angle here is theta, so is this angle right here. That's also theta. And this is a right angle. Uh, so what you see is if I think of that as the hypotenuse and the length of that side is mg, then this length of this side here is mg sine theta. Okay, so that's the magnitude of the tangential force. Now, as you can see here, as this thing is off over here to the right, the tangential force is in the clockwise direction, which we usually count as a negative torque. So if theta is positive, we have a negative torque. And if theta is negative, then we have a positive torque because sine theta is less than zero. Now there's your tangential component of the force. The only thing I'm missing here, I need an L because that force has a lever arm that's that long. Uh, if I, that force had a lever arm that was that long, but it was still the same tangential force, then it would create twice the torque. Anyway, if it's that long, L, then that's its tangential component. So we have for the torque is minus LMG sine theta. Meanwhile, on the right-hand side, we've got to compute I. But I for a single mass of sitting on a rod of length L is just ML squared. And then we have alpha, but alpha, of course, is d squared theta dt squared, the angular acceleration. So if I use I as ml squared, torque is minus lmg sine theta, and alpha equals d squared theta dt squared, all this boils down to ml squared d squared theta dt squared is equal to minus lmg sine theta. Well, that's kind of nice. You can see things are already going to start simplifying. That L can go away against that L, and that M can go away against that M. Now, if you compare that equation with the one we had before, the one we had before that we just solved was minus K times X is equal to L D squared X DT squared. Oops. M d squared x dt squared. Now, the bummer about this is, though, is that uh, this equation almost looks like that equation. We both of them have a second derivative of the unknown with respect to t squared. But this one has just the unknown on the left-hand side. And this one has sine of the unknown function on the left-hand side, which stinks. So we got to do something about this because I can tell you this is not a solvable problem. And here's what we do about it. If you draw, if you, you, we do an approximation. That's the bottom line. If we do an approximation, now what approximation? 
Well, if you look, if you just happen to have a very long, thin triangle, and it doesn't have to be any particular triangle, it doesn't have to be the triangle that's part of this pendulum problem, it's any old long, thin triangle, and it's a right triangle, and then you compare two things. You compare this distance right here, which is that what we call the arc length, with this distance right here, which is this vertical drop. Okay, now if this angle is huge, then you can, if this, sorry, if this angle is tiny, you can see that the difference between this and this, they, they start to, they start to kind of crunch in on each other and meet. So uh, if you're a long ways away, like here, then there's a big difference between that and that. But if you're at a small angle, then there's not much difference between the arc and the height. So the, the height, though, of course, is uh, it's whatever the length of this side is. Let's call that capital R. The height is R sine theta. The length here, theta is measured in radians, is R theta, because that's the whole point of radians, is that you take the... Uh, amount of angle that you've swept out, you multiply by the radius, and you get the amount of distance swept out. So we see here that uh, this is about equal to that provided theta is small. Okay, and of course the r's cancel off both sides, that was irrelevant. So we've just learned that sine theta is approximately theta if theta is small. So now let's stick that in here. We've got, on the left-hand side of this equation, we've got minus g sine theta. And what we're saying is, if the pendulum doesn't swing very widely, then this simplifies to minus g theta is equal to l d squared theta dt squared. Now that's a problem you've already solved. Now it really does look like the simple harmonic oscillator. So the solution is the same as the solution for the simple harmonic oscillator. The solution is that theta as a function of time here, where now theta is now the angle of the pendulum, is equal to some amplitude. That's how wildly the pendulum is swinging. Better be small, otherwise our small theta approximation is not going to look too good. Times cosine of omega t plus phi naught. So theta of t is a cos omega t plus phi naught is the most general solution of that equation. And what has to be true of omega? Well, omega squared had better equal uh, g over l. Or to put it slightly differently, omega had better be equal to root g over l. So that's the solution of the pendulum problem, which you guys get to work on in lab today. And what do I want to say about it? I just want to say one last thing about it, which is, well, what happens to a pendulum if you swing it too wildly? If you swing it too wildly, so if you swing it nice and small, it just goes If you swing it a little bigger, so that an approximation is still good, omega is unchanged. So it's bigger, but still swinging. Now it turns out if you swing it too much, then it starts slowing down. And if you swing it kind of even more bigger, it really starts to slow down. It would go, it would kind of hang out around here and it would go. And it would all just get up to here and be barely turning around at the top really take it sweet time and then you got one more situation if you swung it even harder than that it would go around the world so yes the pendulum is not the same as the simple harmonic oscillator but for small a for small amplitudes it does behave like the simple harmonic oscillator and that's why you'll be playing in the pendulum in the lab 
in a chapter 15, which is about the simple harmonic oscillator.